America's crime crisis somehow getting even more disturbing with the latest example happening in our nation's capital. An innocent woman savagely beaten by a group of teens on a bus. It's very hard to watch. Look here. <laughs> No one tried to help her, including the bus driver. According to the victim, all she was doing was trying to stop a group of teens from swearing around a child. There was things, objects being thrown at me throughout the whole incident. Only thing I could recall was the kids hitting me and kicking me, and I had no defense. Physically, I got like a little bruise on my arm. My jacket's like yeah, ripped look. off of me. I asked several times prior to the stop that I was getting off at to stop the bus, stop the bus, stop the bus. The bus driver made no attempts to stop the bus. He didn't alert no, local authorities or anything to my defense. And here's how D.C.'s Democrat mayor reacted. I imagine it's traumatizing and it shouldn't happen. Uh, and that is not the any type of crime that we want to see in our city at any time. The lawlessness doesn't end there. Philadelphia police attacked by a group of ATV and dirt bike riders who hurled bricks and bottles at officers and a top retail CEO blasting San Francisco as the city of chaos. He's closing his company's only Bay Area store due to organized theft oh rings God. and a lack of safety in the city. Rising crime, a key issue for midterm voters, and many are asking when Democrats are going to say enough is enough. And, Judge, one of the things that I learned today from Josh Kroshar, who was on Newsroom, said that when they're polling voters and their crime is an issue to them, it's both Republicans and Democrats. It's not a partisan issue at all. Interesting. Well, the, the, the problem with what, what, what we just saw on that bus is reminiscent of the Kitty Genovese case in uh, 1964 when a woman was being raped and stabbed outside of an apartment building while 38 witnesses and passersby turned up their radios and pulled down the shade. When they were interviewed afterwards, the woman was, was murdered. Well, afterwards, they said, well, we thought it was a husband and a wife, a girlfriend and a boyfriend, as if domestic violence is, is a legitimate uh, crime to overlook. But what we've got now is a bystander effect. And the Democrats own this. The Democrats own this. You know, the, the chaos that's been created that Dan Henniger talked about in the Wall Street Journal is a chaos that we have never seen before. We are now legitimizing the criminal, emboldening the criminal, and denying victims their victimhood, their status, their voice. By releasing these uh, defendants and these suspects without keeping them in jail, what we're saying to them is go right ahead. You can do it again. There will be no consequences. And we've got now the organized smash and grab, the organized theft rings. Virtually no one is taking a stand because people are afraid to do so. And you know what? I thought about this a lot, Dana, today. The, the idea of police standing down. Police were told to stand down during the summer of 2020. That's when it started. And once the police were told to stand down, then oh, everybody else is standing down. There is no benefit to helping someone. And a lot of people are not helping because they're fearful. They know these dirtbags are getting out. They know that if they can assault the police, they're going to come back and assault you. And until we change the laws, until we make sentences stricter, until we get rid of this notion, this nonsense notion of social justice that no one's defined for a dirtbag who doesn't deserve social justice but criminal justice, we're going to live with this and we're going to lose this country. None of the prosecutors that... Have... Can I just say, that was fantastic. <laughs> Oh, sure. Thank yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> thank, you. Well, thank you. I know applause isn't normally done. We're used to it. Right? We're used to it now. Yeah, yeah. Here, so you don't want to feed it. <laughs> right. And what you don't want to feed. This is a daily occurrence. I we, would we, put we you in charge of our uh, justice system in my country. Never mind here. Um, <laughs> thank you. Greg, none of these prosecutors are willing to make a course correction. Yeah, well, here's the deal. Number one, I don't know if that woman's brave or crazy. I would just as soon, like, go to Beirut or go somewhere where, <laughs> than tell kids Safer? to stop swearing <laughs> on a bus. Because right now, there's nothing more frightening than a group of teens on their own. Because all, all standards have been pretty much reduced. Because it is the, it's the broken window effect. We're watching it happen. Remember, we were told that that was uh, deeply racist. Um, the hierarchy has changed. When you look at uh, elderly Asians who were being brutalized, the champions of tolerance went away. When women were getting raped and beaten and murdered, 
by released repeat offenders, the feminists took a breather. And that is because they cannot defy the religion of social justice. That's the hierarchy now. It puts the rights of criminals, mostly male, above everybody else. So that, that's why it's like, well, we really can't talk, talk about an increased police presence because the increased police presence, it upsets the feelings of minorities. That's an argument. That's why they on, on college campuses, why they don't have security, where they reduce security after a rape. It's because they don't want to upset persons of color, as if persons of color might never get attacked. They would like to have a police presence as well. But it's not just crime that's up. It's weird crime, right? Where are the green gro goblins? What happened to them? Do you guys remember? Couple got yeah. arrested. And yeah, they but they're out. they're out. I, some might even work at Fox. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. But you got an axe guy. What happened to the axe guy? You have a guy that just attacked another person with a, with a sheath. You don't even need the weapon anymore. You could just use whatever the weapon comes in. That was just today. Um, so what's happening is as more and more crime increases, you start seeing these wacky, bizarre examples because everything is okay now. There, it, everything is permitted. And then on top of that, and everybody knows this, there's something that you can't even talk about because uh, it's not technically a crime. The ongoing public harassment is off the charts. Mm. If it's not happening to you, you see it happen. Yeah. You have a completely unstable, deranged madman, you know, harassing like tourists or something. And everybody just goes like this yep. because they go like, what am I going to do? I can't call the cops. And if the cops, cops come, this guy's already gone. That's happened to me a couple of times. I like look and I go, what can I do? You know, and it's like and that is off. It's like there's a bat signal now that goes off and tells all the deranged that you got a free swing. Because that's what's happening in the city right now. The, the, the kids were, the teens were doing that to that woman. But Jesse, the bus driver had, uh, uh, Ted Williams said that the bus driver has an option to press a button that would immediately call for a cops to get them and, and to help her. And that didn't happen. The adults aren't even doing anything. It's a city bus. It's probably broken. It's probably been <laughs> broken for a month and no one ever called it in. This is what happens when society tells women to be men and men to be women. Where the women fight and the guys sit back and watch. Years ago, this never would have happened. I never remember seeing gangs of girls beat the hell out of another woman while men sat around and watched. Men have been told they're toxic, and women have been told they can be even more aggressive than men. And that's what happens. This is what you see now. And about the criminals, the streets will do whatever they can get away with. If the streets are going to push and push and the police are not going to push back, they're going to do what they're going to do. And all of these things are the outcomes of when the left attacks the pillars of society, when they attack gender, when they attack law, when they attack order. And the Republicans have to get a lot more aggressive and say, what is the government doing that's working? They're not protecting your safety. They're not protecting your business. They're not protecting the border. What exactly are you delivering on? Because we want to have that debate and make the Democrats defend the outcomes because they can't do that. There's a story in San Francisco. The city of San Francisco spent $1.7 million to build a bathroom, single stall. It wasn't a golden toilet seat like Saddam Hussein, metal seat. 1.7. Now, I know how much to build a single stall bathroom costs. It's about $20,000, maybe 25 if you use the union guys. So they're stealing the money. Contractors are stealing taxpayer money from the government, and the government's not doing anything about it because we're not doing anything about it. And it's time we start doing something about this. Piers, when you return to America uh, after being away back in England for a while and you come back here, do you think we have absolutely lost it? Well, I spent a lot of time in New York, but also I've got a place in California in Beverly Hills that used to be very safe. I mean, you felt very safe in Beverly Hills and very privileged to be there. Mm. It feels dangerous now. Wow. I mean, I, I go to a little Italian in the middle of Beverly Hills with my family, normally the first night we get in. Both times we've been recently, there's been a shootout in that very street. And I'm like, Beverly Hills, shootouts? Mm -hmm. And then you hear the other day that uh, not far from our place, a, a woman, just completely random woman walking along, stabbed in the head <laughs> with scissors by a, a right. maniac, the kind of attacker you're talking shoes. about. And it's, it's actually unsettling. And I feel it in New York as well. It just feels like the temperature's rising a lot of more crazy people around doing crazy things, and that there's a really disproportionate attention being paid to the wrong people claiming to be victims. There will be people watching that video, incredibly. I mean, we wouldn't be. But they'll be watching that video thinking, well, those poor kids, you know, they, they've obviously had traumatic upbringings to behave like this. <laughs> In other words, immediately wanting to position them as the victims, not the woman who's being attacked by these unbearable, violent little brats and completely disrespectful little brats 
not only with the language they're using, but the way they treat that woman. And until societies, and we're the same in the UK, by the way, until you get back to actually treating victims as victims and the criminals as criminals, and that's why I applauded your speech, until you do that, society gets ever more dangerous and ever more fractured. And it is really incumbent, I think, on leaders to say, this cannot be tolerated. And you've got to get back to treating victims as victims and criminals as criminals. Well, everybody's a victim now. Right. That's everybody's a victim. That's the point. So that, yeah. So it's, it's actually made the actual victim seem less relevant. Yes. It's like, it's like shouting racism, you know? It's like that's reduced the actual yes. importance of what racism is. Yeah. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.